Last time I said that I had to jam a plastic replica of a halogen light bulb up a grown man's ass. What? Meow. Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome back to a little bit more of VA11 Hall A. Cold, 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 cold. This is the second half of December 17th. And what's really interesting is we see the Alice Rabbit thing in the background. That could be a coincidence or that we're about to find something out about Alice Rabbit. And if you are not sure as to what's been going on so far, we've slowly been working up to today. The 17th of December. Because we are kind of anticipating some sort of attack coming from Alice Rabbit. And Alice Rabbit is this anonymous hacker type person or a group. And there's been a lot of threats coming in. Saying that today is the day that the retribution is coming. Like there's going to be some sort of terrorist attack. I don't know if anything's going to happen. But if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen today. I'm kind of at the point where I'm realizing I have no idea how this game would end. How much longer it has to it. I looked at like how long to beat.com. It's like a seven and a half hour game, eight hour game, and we're already on like episode, what, 10? And we've done like 45 minute chunks for a while. <laughs> so we've got to be at least on the second half of the end of this game, right? Like, I don't even know. Anywho, let's get back into it here. We just went on break with our friend Alma, and let's see what she says when she comes back as well. Oh, I got to pump up my jukebox again. By the way, March of the White Knights creeps me out. We need a different song. It sure is chilly out there. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing. And the hobo out there seems like a nice guy. <laughs> Billy Vine, oh yeah, he's a cool guy. Very respectful. Apparently he got into some legal trouble and that's why he's like that. Oh, that sucks. He could also just be a very nice crackhead though. <laughs> I have a cousin that lives like a hobo actually. Really? It's a bit complicated though. The problem is, his family has tried to get him to live with them, but his pride won't let him accept their help. Man, that's like the saddest thing to see in the world, that somebody lives on the streets. Like, I feel so bad. And like... Like, I have mixed feelings about it too, though, because like... When somebody bothers you on the street for money... You want to assume they're using it for like, I don't know, food? Things that are good for them, things that will help keep them alive, but that's not always the case either. Sometimes they get really, really pushy with you for money, and all they want to do is like buy drugs with it, or like alcohol, or some like cigarettes. They're not actually like gonna go help themselves with it. So I don't know, like it really depends on the type of person you run into. I don't know, like I said, I have mixed feelings about it. I hate going through like big cities and having people harass me for money. You always just say you don't have money, and you try to not make eye contact is kind of... Kind of the approach that... I've started to take on. Like, I don't carry cash on my only plastic. So I don't know. Like, again. The part of me wants to be like... You have good intentions, and the other part of me from what I've seen is like, that's not always the case. So I have, like again, I have such mixed feelings about it. He'd rather live on the streets for some reason. I can't tell with some people, sadly. Why did he become a hobo in the first place? Bad investments, debts, bank evicted him from his house. Oh. It was a serious problem because he has epileptic attacks and refused to take his medication. <laughs> I just don't get what's up with him. Honey, some service here. Oh god, Dorothy. <laughs> I'm here, don't scream. Oh, you two hanging out at the back of the bar. What kind of stuff are you doing? Just talking. And if you don't know who Dorothy is, she's like the child robot porn star. <laughs> is that what they call it these days? Uh, what do you want? Something soft, something sweet. No alcohol, please. Yeah, wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from the vending machine? But I like you! Do you just like my presence so much? Sweet non-alcoholic, you say? Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's pretty easy. I think the blue fairy might hit it or some other sugary drink. And I guess what you need to know about the drinks here is that the Carmatrine is the alcohol, if you don't already know that. So I just need to pick something that doesn't have Carmatrine in it or I should say has optional Carmatrine. So this should fit the bill. A nice little blue fairy. Here you go. Here you go, just like you asked, Dorothy. See? You don't get this kind of treatment from vending machines. Unless you're Lawrence. Wait, what? But he has this weird idea that good service is the same as selling lukewarm cans of cola. <laughs> Lawrence? A friend of mine, he's a vending machine. <laughs> oh. But how impolite of me, huh? 
Oh, I'm lovely and my name's Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Alma, the pleasure's mine. Uh, Dorothy, you say? Yep, why? Oh, nothing, guess I've heard about you before. Whoa! Really, what kind of stuff? Tell me, tell me, tell me! Mostly about your, um, uh, pluckiness. <laughs> what does that even mean? And here I was thinking it was because of a sex worker. Oh, so much trying to be subtle. Hey, I take pride in my job. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Isn't it dangerous? I know how to take care of myself, thank you very much. Where do you work, Alma? I'm a hacker. Oh, really? A full-fledged hacker? Not the kind that, like, sees a computer logged into some account and says that's hacking, right? No, 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 of course not. I've always been curious about how being a hacker works. Do you just, like, start typing real fast while waiting for something to happen? <laughs> God damn it, Dorothy. No. <laughs> I can explain, but I don't know if you'll get it. Yeah, we won't know unless you try, right? Last time I said that, I had to jam a plastic replica of a halogen light bulb up a grown man's ass. What? <laughs> it was a success! Uh, uh, okay then, let me try to explain in general how it works. Let's say I have to retrieve information from a company's database. Alright. First, I do some research on the target, the operating system, the servers, how the information is stored, and all of that. There have been a couple occasions where I had to go in blind, but they're the exception rather than the rule. First, I secure the things from my side. I start working behind proxies, websites, and through other more vulnerable computers I find on the way. Uh, uh... After that, I start testing the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try known exploits as long as they don't trigger any alarm. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols, and I look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. I, I see. <laughs> then when I'm finally in, I go and retrieve my user privileges. After that, I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. Uh, how, how do you do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. I can use my pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info someone already gave me, but the usual way is a buffer overflow. Ooh, it's just so interesting to hear. <laughs> the buff. What happens next? What happens next? <laughs> I create a back door in the system before leaving and covering my tracks. I I can't. I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> Look at her face. Alma, hack me. Hack me like you've never hacked anything before. <laughs> There's a little heart in her mouth. Make my buffer overflow! Create a backdoor in me! Escalate your user privileges! Find flaws in my security! <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away! No shit, what happened? Have you seen those movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook? But, they make it sound like they're having sex instead? Uh, suggestive scenes, yeah. Well, the whole thing was kind of like that for me. Oh, uh, really? I guess humans don't really get it because their minds don't upload to networks or anything. But trust me, if you recorded yourself giving a really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, you'd make millions. Horny Lilum are an unexploited market. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> oh, looks like my ride is here. Uh, your ride? Uh, yep, yep, uh, no, my brother-in-law came to look for me. Uh, is it alright to ask that from him? It's okay, I've known him since preschool, it just so happened that he got married to my sister. Hey, Dorothy, you need a ride? Uh, can you drop me by 3rd Street? Sure, it's on the way. Yeah, I'll take your offer then. Bye, honey. Uh, later, Jill. <laughs> like, again, I don't get where we're going with this game, but it's just, like, interesting to talk to these people. Like, I'm becoming more and more invested in the universe, in the characters. Like, I feel like I'm getting to know these people. I don't know, man. It's really interesting. The street seems noisy. Oh, a client. Yeah, hello. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get? Ew, such a small yet comfortable place. You have a question mark on your head. I thought that was your hair at first. Truly an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of a suburban desert. Oh, 
place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. A nest where everyone, from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie, can sit and kill their insides. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Truly a real persona non grata. That's Latin for a mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and philosophical. <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here. Oh, what are you gonna have then? 17. Ah, uh, uh, excuse me. I said 17, 7 plus 10. Uh, w w what does that mean? What does it mean to you? Ah, uh, just to be sure, 17 is about the drink you want, right? Only if you want it to be. Uh, 17, what the hell does that mean? Okay, so. I just click a drink here, but dang. Uh, you see how it says 11 out of 24? I'm going to number 17 and seeing if dude likes that, okay? A piano man. Of course you want a piano man, because the piano man is one of those, like, flashy promo type drinks, so... Let's just get you your piano man, you odd person. <laughs> Alright, so five more flanner guy, there we go, three karma trine, and then we gotta on the rocks and mix it. And hopefully... Hopefully we nail it. Here you go, bruh. How is this a 17? Uh, it isn't. You said 17 would only be related to your drink if I thought it was, and I, I think it isn't. Ooh, you subverted my expectations by taking me literally, Sneaky! Da uh, da. No. <laughs> what brings you here, mister? I am Armando. <laughs> of course you're Armando. <laughs> Virgilio Armando. See, I introduced myself using an Asian order because that's a lot more polite. Right. I, I don't get this guy. And I came here looking for an otherworldly experience. I was passing by and I saw this place is called Valhalla. And I want to see the souls of resting warriors, the wounded spirits of noble souls, the golden hall full of never-ending banquets, and the lively Valkyries looking over them. Uh, we have some arcade machines in the corner. <laughs> no, 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 you're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic, giving a mystical air to a mundane affair. I wanted to see drunk people, I wanted to see waitresses and food. I wanted to see the bar and all its decadent glory. Should I talk like this? Well, you're out of luck, today's been quite a slow day. Not that I'm very surprised, given how things have been going in the streets, though. Humans are a nasty bunch, that is true. Making a ruckus coming at each other, but that's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. Uh, uh I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh yeah, then give me an example, not a zoologist bartender. <laughs> like I said, I don't know the exact details, I just know that that isn't right. <laughs> If memory serves right, once a lion takes over a pride, every cub born from another lion is killed or something like that. Pfft. Takes over a pride? You can't take over a pride. A pride isn't a tangible thing. You need to stop making things up and not see while it's just a bartender. <laughs> you need to stop being such a douche, Virgilio Marmondo. But going back on topic, do you know that what the number 17 means? The atomic number of chlorine? No, and a Chloe is a name, not a number, you know. Oh my god, this guy's dumb. Ha! The group where halogens are in the periodic table? Oh, stop making up words like halogens and periodic and table. <laughs> okay then, I give up. 17 is us. Huh? Every human has 17 pairs of chromosomes. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. I gave you a piano, man. <laughs> it's, uh, 23. Uh, what is? Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Not 17. Oh, well, they're both primal numbers, so it's the same idea. <laughs> primal? I think you mean prime? This guy, this guy really creeps me out now. 
Um, do you want anything else? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Uh, okay. Uh, he wants a plum floating perfume in a son of a bitch. <laughs> I actually think I know exactly what he wants. So if I go to bottled drinks here, sure enough, a fedora. So, every drink here is priced at 500 Dana. Okay, so what if I just toss you in there and, uh, mix up a little bit? How's that? We got a plum fume. Here you go. Ha! You didn't, uh, no, wait, you did. Enjoy. <laughs> I will, I'll drink this, um, perfume. Like, it's, I don't like the way he's looking at me either, like, ew. <laughs> uh, you don't really have to, uh, that. Yeah, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender, have you ever thought about death? Yeah, but how? What if we're already dead, both of us? What? What tells you I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this is reality is real and that we're not, in fact, in heaven or hell all along? What if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20-something in his room? I could punch you to make you feel reality. <laughs> I don't care about any of that, actually. This reality is real for me, and that's all that matters. Oh, such a close-minded way of seeing things. You need to get away from the factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. Whoa, God! The habanera has started. It means Twilight of the Gods in German, by the way. What? Well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy the new world order. Something's going on outside. What? Okay, if anything's going on, it's going on now. I told you the 17th was going to be something. A couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Cars don't just explode? Oh, hell. Uh, let me take a look out the window. Be careful. Oh god, I hear gunshots now. I see a lot of flashes in the distance, most likely gunshots. Oh god! Jill, come here a second! Uh, what? About five gigabytes of reports proving that several White Knight squads have been used to cover... Illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group, probably Alice Rabbit. We're receiving reports of several units going rogue. Oh, so maybe that makes a little bit more sense that Alice Rabbit will be trying to expose the White Knights, seeing as how the White Knights have had so much corruption within their organization. That makes a little bit more sense. So I kind of see some things tying together. And using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the street. Several counter-terrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue the crazed units after a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration from the Zaibatsu Corps CEO on the subject, but until then, oh god. Wow, that's a lot of gunfire. Things are ugly in and outside of that bank, it seems. Uh, I'd recommend you stay here tonight, it's too dangerous to even think about going outside. Ah, uh, what if they break in? They won't. Even then, this bar has quite a security system. And I'll be here protecting you as an added bonus. Oh, dude, don't fuck with Dana. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll stay tonight. Oh, but what about four of the kitty? I'll get you a spare mattress I have. You mind sleeping in my office? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, I guess it's fine. Good. Okay, well, let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have the Zenkatsu on hand, just in case. Uh, the metal bat with nails? There's nothing it can't bash. <laughs> Oh my god, what? Oh, uh, Lucille! It's like, it's like Negan's Lucille from The Walking Dead. Heh. <laughs> uh, say, Gil, four. I hope everything's better by tomorrow. Oh god, sleep tight, I'll protect you. Why do you give me money for that? Flawless service bonus, not granted. What? Whose drink did I mess up? Bullshit! I did great! Whatever. Oh god. Okay. So that was pretty quick. Usually our episodes are a little bit longer. When it comes to this game. We're on day six now. Technically on break. I kind of want to see what's up though. Like we're not at home. 
It is now safe to keep playing. I kind of want to see what's going on here. Rise and shine! Oh, God. Oh, I'm actually gonna really out of there. Oh, good morning. Oh, oh man. Hmm. It's 11 a.m. though. Oh, that's morning for me on the weekends and any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at the least. Uh, how so? Saibatsu so Corps' president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing. Like they were petrified somehow. Oh god. You make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just <laughs> glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out and it's not really safe yet, but uh, it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. Oh god. Not only are the White Knights the problem, regular folks are on edge, too. I wonder if Say's okay. I wonder if Say's evil! Should we be worried about Gil? Eh, that kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that, uh, uh whatever it is he's, he's doing, I'm sure he's safe. Dare I say even safer where he is than here. I sure hope so. Uh, are we gonna work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh! Oh, huh. all right. Say, you want me to help you get to your apartment? Uh, actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay, then let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. Oh, whoa, this is weird. Whoa! It's completely different! Oh my god, and here we are! Whoa! Whoa! God damn, everything's finally changing a little bit! Oh, home sweet home, thanks a lot. Hey boss, you wanna hang out for a bit? Huh? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit. I, I don't know, mostly a thank you for helping me. Well, I mean, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime anyway, didn't I? Oh yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that the beer always leads to something else. Ooh! To more beer? <laughs> I was gonna say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. What? But I think we're safe here. Come on in, then. Excuse me. Yeah, you want one? Oh, no, 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 no smoking. Uh, sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me, though. Smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Ugh. Blech. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? Oh, yeah, it's December. It gets cold from time to time, but nothing uh, Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. All oh, right, boss. You're not in very good with the cold, are you? You know it. Uh, you didn't bring your jacket here, either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Uh, would you like a sweater or something? Oh, no, 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 don't mind me. <laughs> this is so awkward. <laughs> I insist, I have a hoodie from some time ago. It was too big for me. Uh, why buy it then? It was dirt cheap! Right. Wait, 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 where did you get this one? I don't know, some flea market ages ago, why? Nothing. It was just like the one I had many years ago. Oh, weird. Yeah, what happened to it? Too much use and it just ripped. I see. Uh, you can keep it if you want. I never use it anyway. Uh, um, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? Whoa! I'm eternally 17. <laughs> Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me go change into something more comfortable. Oh! Uh, take your time. Oh, hi, Four. How you doing, kitty? <laughs> Say, Joe, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring in my general direction. Huh? Oh, yeah. That's just Four. He'll be wary of new visitors. Cats would be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly enough. Just, just give him some time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat that usually have green. Yellow, I'd say. They usually have yellow eyes. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? I mean, back at home we had a bear? Who's we? I uh, say, uh, what, what? Good old Bosco, he kept intruders away better than any dog. <laughs> right. Huh. This picture here isn't something you see every day. 
Wait, what? Oh, me taking such a sappy pic. Oh, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Oh, yeah, they're in 2070. It's probably all digital, right? Who are these? Uh, that's, uh, the, the, the one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabrielle, my sister. Huh. Is this pic recent, or no? Actually, that one's from like three or four years ago. You look exactly the same. I'm only 27, what do you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent because you usually don't see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone printed and framed. <laughs> Did you two break up on good terms then, or...? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. Uh, let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. Ooh. We never broke up formally. And I, I guess I still have feelings for her? I just... This went away. I haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing, and you look so happy in the picture. Why have a pick out like this, then? I just couldn't get my mind off of something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else's presence pressed up against your side. Ooh, Dana, press your titties up against me! Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs. Putting your head on their chest. Listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Oh my god, you remembered every single word of that. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you and protecting you. I don't know. Felt nostalgic and then miserable. Huh. I'll, I'll just put this away. <laughs> I've been meaning to apologize, but uh, I feel like it's too late now. Where Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. I'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Huh. What's that on the table? Looks like an end there. It's nothing, nothing! Now please give that back to me! Uh, low. Uh, alright. <laughs> I saw nothing, don't worry. This has been such an awkward, like, encounter. Uh, anyway, let, let, let's grab some beers. Uh, guide me. Oh god. Cans left. Beer so far. Remaining beer 100%. Drink! <laughs> what is this game? I don't get what's going on. I don't get it. Damn, you got a lot of beer. What, it's only a 12 pack? I mean, maybe I'm from Wisconsin, but uh, like 12 just doesn't seem like it's that much. <laughs> let's drink. Oh wait, no, I can choose one to drink. Oh, so I can get wasted with you? Or, I could say sober, or I can get somewhere in the middle. Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. With that, and beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? The drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the ones in the bar are more of a double IPA. This one's more of a pilsner. English, please? This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't taste lighter to me. Uh, this is this one made with that, uh, uh, what was the name of that liquid you use at the bar again? Nutriogenic Dichometrical Lydrogenol or NDL. <laughs> it was a supplement or something, right? It was experimental fluid they created to replace water when the Maiden Kiss polluted water supplies. Whoa, wait, what? The effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so the NDL never went into mass production, but the BTC still commissioned it and used it in bars. How do you know more about this than Dana? Doesn't she own the place? And is this one made with it? Yeah, uh, let's see here. Yep, yep, here it is, near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch? It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. Ah, uh, I see. I just realized something. Wow. You're a nerd, Jill. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I still have that bottle of rum around here. You want some? Uh, you gonna have some too? Uh, not really, no. Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink a beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? 
Why wouldn't I? I don't know. What with being my boss and all, I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Aw, let's take a drink. <laughs> Look how she's gonna take a drink. Oh my god, I can take a lot. I can take a whole lot. The 80. There's only 80%. Like, there's 80% remaining on just one beer. And I have 12 cans of beer. We can get super wasted. And besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm only boss in name anyway. That's good to know. On a side note, it surprises me you kept that poster of me in the room. And even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know? Uh, does that make you uncomfortable? I mean, if it doesn't make you uncomfortable, then why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. I, I'm just still wondering why you did it, though. Um, aside from feeling an empty spot on the wall, I don't know. I just thought it was funny, too. I guess it's like if someone gave you, I don't know, a dildo-shaped trophy or something like that. <laughs> That's a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, what? No steamy nights of fashion? Yeah, not since, uh, what? A year ago, I think? And I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, 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 no. Nothing of a sort. It was a different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. Uh, not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Oh. Have you had your period? <laughs> Glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, 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 you talk about the poster compared to having a dildo-shaped trophy? <laughs> Did you just call me dildo face? <laughs> That's what friends are for. <laughs> hey boss, be honest with me here. About what? Who is Gil exactly? Uh, what do you mean? You know what I mean, like, who the fuck is he? I don't think his name's even Gillian. And I think the fact that people are hinting at the fact that he sounds like he has a different name, or looks like he has a different name, kind of makes me feel like his name isn't even Gillian. Oh, yeah, that. Well, I mean, I have a couple ideas. I know for certain that Gil was in the Hong Kong riots, and that he took part in the anti-riot force before defecting. Uh, that should give me a clue as to who he is, but, uh, but... But so far, I've only found out about one such defector. And he didn't leave Hong Kong for at least four years. I also know for certain that Gil was in England and France during that time frame. And it's always like that. Whenever whenever I think I have a clue as to who he is, something else comes up that contradicts the evidence. He's so mysterious! Oh my god! The guy's troublesome. Yeah, a bit, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if Gil's alright. Worried about him? Make it sound like I'm some sort of emotionless robot. You could be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. There's three things for certain that I know about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. Ooh. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. <laughs> he does? I've seen him reject food that's even been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's maybe allergic or something. He's not. <laughs> Man, what a baby. How did you meet such a guy? He, uh, showed up to the door of the bar. He what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with the Robert and the levitation potion. Right, the levitation potion. <laughs> it was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but... He said he didn't have any money on him. I, I, I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. He what? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. Hmm. Again, like... Okay, let's take a moment here. Like, I'm feeling so attached to these characters, man. Like, I'm really feeling like I'm really deep into the universe, and that's why, like, I'm just so... Obsessed with this game. I love it so much He wanted a second chance or whatever and I told him that if he could watch himself I'd find him a job and I'll be damned. He looked totally different the next day Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him So I decided to take him at face value 
I judge him from what he did as an employee. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time, sometimes literally. What surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself when I've always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't just ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. I really need to learn more about this Robert thing. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know. Yeah, how so? Oh my god, by the way, I need to figure out what's going on with your arm here, Dana. Well, what with the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker. <laughs> I can't remember her name. Alma? Yeah, I was gonna say Armitage. She's a nice girl, you know. And I don't think she's young enough to be called a girl. Says the girl who is eternally 17. <laughs> In any case, she's really lovely. When you hear her speak of her family, she speaks with such love. Her face just brightens up. Kind of makes me jealous that she has such a close relationship with them, to be honest. You have bad relations? You have bad relations with your family? Not bad. But I'm not exactly close to anyone aside from my mom, dad, and aunt. But back to Alma. I'm really hoping she finds a nice guy to settle with. I mean, she's so bent into finding one, I can't help but want her to succeed. Oh, I see. There's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, oh, uh, yeah, Dorothy. <laughs> she intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, it's rather that she takes to it with such childish excitement. Yeah, I kind of noticed that too, but uh, then again, Lilim can be weird. <laughs> you think? Lilim operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. And if they lose an arm, they can just reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. Hmm. It's not like they haven't detained human-like emotions, like fear or love, but they are different. I wonder if introducing pain is a good way to keep AI in check. Hmm. Hmm. Like a different culture, if you must. Huh. I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something like that. Lilum get positive reinforcements straight from their bodies if they are fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful, challenging social interaction. Interesting. The name Lilum. It's a bit weird, though. It is? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilum doesn't really convey any sort of image of automatations or automatons. Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Ooh. A bot is akin to calling them retarded, oh gosh, and a doll is like calling them fake. Oh, thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lilum? As far as I know, it's because they all come from a bigger AI called the Lilith. And Lilum are Lilith, li <laughs> and Lilum are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Oh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> don't act stupid. By the way, when you first transferred, I called you Julianne, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. See? Like that. It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that just feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch the Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything from the dolls to the costumes to the lunchboxes. It didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once. They were really nice. That was beyond nice! The show was about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight! She fights demons born from greed and vanity! How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies. And yet, still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. 
I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid's show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Oh gosh. Challenging as fuck. Whoa, you got excited there. And that's the problem. Back then, I was obsessed with jewels. I sang the songs just like her. I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can! It's besides the point! It was nice while I was in elementary school, but when I went on to middle school, and were surprised tweens are jackasses, they went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I, mean, I don't hold it against jewels, I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. <laughs> I never talk about it because I find the whole thing silly in retrospect. And yet it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? Yeah, when I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened, and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of a shallow jerkwad. Oh no. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was, and I went on to become who I am today. And the uh, less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. So, Jill, what kind of guy was your grandpa? What? He was rough around the edges, the kind of guy that means well, even if he says otherwise. He seemed to have a soft spot for me, though. One moment, he was congratulating my dad by berating him a little bit. And then the next, he was playing with me. My dad worked a lot, and my mom was always traveling, so I spent most of my childhood with him. Can I ask how he died? Out of old age. My dad says his last words were something like, Fucking scientist. Created talking mannequins, but they still can't let you upload your brain. Why the question? I'm curious about you. Really curious. I just realized that even though we see each other almost every day, I know very little about you. Oh. I mean, from what you tell me, though, it seems like your grandpa's personality has rubbed off on you a little bit. Yeah, I've heard that one since I was a kid, actually. <laughs> you know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Alright, keep in mind, you're included in the circle too, so any insults you hurl will probably apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time. A red-headed, glasses-wearing gut nut called Iris. Oh, the one you called for the helmet thing? And I bet you that's probably why... Dana here had a soft spot for the redhead that was wearing glasses earlier in the game. Yeah, that one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar, too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called N1RVNA. Nirvana, probably, right? You should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. Ann. Means it's an annex to another business? Uh, well, what does she do there? I think the bar wasn't originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building somewhere and opened up Nerve and B in the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said she wanted to a place away from the noisy rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. <laughs> woman cave. That aside, let's see. Friends, friends, friends. I mean, I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, oh, and there's also my old partner from when I was with the, the Neo San Francisco police force. Good old Lexi, I should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in what? I've done a lot of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, a chimney cleaner, a lumberjack, a pet shop attendant, a corporate mascot, a kawaha, corporate what? I still see my face on some websites from time to time. Anyways, aside from you, Gil, my sis, Iris, and Lexi, um, uh, I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. <laughs> what about you? Um, I mean, I guess I have acquaintances here and there, but back at home in college, I went out a lot. 
but it felt more like going out was the pleasure rather than the people involved. And aside from you and Gil, my closest friend since moving here is Alma and uh, uh, Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. <laughs> Can the cat talk or is it like her imagination? I'm not sure. And you know, uh, he's a cat. Because the dogs can do that type of stuff, so I'm not sure what the cats can do. Hey, cat's fine too, you know. Hey, boss, what are you, what are you gonna do when the bar closes? I don't know. Maybe I'll take a friend's offer of working with her. I was also thinking about going back home and helping with things there. Or maybe going traveling for a while. I see. Ah, oh, but don't worry, bureaucracy's slow as fuck, so they won't get to close the bar for quite a while. Better enjoy being there while you can. Yeah, maybe. Will you be visiting me in whatever bar I end up working in? I have a bone to pick with that guy that supervises the bar I'm planning to get you transferred to. I go there even though I have virtually no reason to. With you there, I'd have something pleasant to look forward to. Ah, uh, you're sending me to someone you have problems with? If I have to trust another bar owner, it's certainly him. He's actually a pleasant boss from what I've seen. The fact that he and I have a tendency to go at each other's throats is an unrelated matter. I, I guess I'll trust you on that one then. Ah, don't worry. Maybe I can get you a bracelet made out of wood pieces from the bar's counter or something. Oh, that'd be cool. Huh, we'll see. Hey, I'll tell you what. When the bar closes, let's both take a vacation. Go on a trip. That'll clear your mind a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Wait, what? What is this? The hell is this? Winter time, I guess, and we're just observing the scenery? Oh! That was chapter one? Jesus Christ! <laughs> chapter two, Armaga. Oh my god. The electricity bill will be sent out on the 24th. Please make sure you have the $8,000 needed. Jill is curious about a diorama she saw. Getting one will prevent her from getting too distracted. Have a nice day. Fuck. 8,000 freaking dollars? In four days. So we're, we're gonna be going for a while here. Oh god, this game. Jesus, how long is this game? Okay, I need you guys' help. You guys gotta let me know how much more of this game is. Because, holy damn, I feel like we're not even kind of close to the end. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this part. I... That was kind of cool to actually get out of what we were doing before. Always being in the bar and just kind of hanging out on the balcony, talking a little bit, getting to know Boss a little bit. We don't know about her arm yet, but... Man, oh god, I feel like there's so much more to do still. I should probably save my video game real quick here. And end it. But man, okay, I gotta be really cautious with my money here, too. Oh god, because I only have 4,000. She wants to buy another thing, and I need 8,000. Ugh! Ugh! Oh god, I'm not gonna have electricity, guys! Shit! Damn it! Hopefully things go really, really well when it comes to tipping. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've been enjoying Valhalla, VA11 Hall A, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Go ahead and comment down below what you thought of this part, or if you noticed anything different from my playthrough compared to other people's playthroughs. And, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, that way you can see more stuff that we do around here. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah. Yeah. Ruins are full of pots! <laughs> oh, God. No, God, please, no! I was going to one, my name is Swing Point, and welcome to a little bit of a game called Undertale. The intro loops around here, so let's take a second here to read through the intro so we have an idea of what Undertale is all about. Long ago...